It was a cold, gloomy day when the spine chilling murder happened, which shocked the entire nation. No one would have thought two 10 years old could have committed such a brutal and gruesome crime. The pair walked into a shopping centre in Merseyside, England and kidnapped a two years old boy before smashing his skull with an iron rod and draped his body across the railroad tracks only for it to be severed. Let's unfold the case of Robert Thompson and John Fenables. The two-year-old boy was James Bolger. He had been shopping with his mother on the 12th of February 1993 before being snatched and suffered for hours before his life was unfairly and cruelly ended by the two boys. But before we look at the dark side of the story, let's talk about the background of Robert Thompson and John Fenwells and this might help us to understand a little bit better about why they committed the murder. Were they too abused when they were younger so felt the need to torture and kill other people as a means to release their built up anger or were there other reasons behind this? Robert Thompson was born on the 23rd of August in 1982. His father was an aggressive alcoholic who left the family when Robert was just 6 years old. His mother Anne took to alcohol as a way to escape. Life was not easy for the Thompsons and eventually Robert would rob as a way to survive. On the other hand, we have John who was born on the 13th of August 1982. He was a middle child and is known to have two other siblings with developmental problems. John was also a victim of bullying because of the squint in his eyes. The two boys met each other at school and were known to terrorise the school playground. Shortly after their friendship began, they started bullying others. They would make sure the children they targeted were very weak and the pair frequently skipped school and robbed from local shops and shopping centres. On the 12th of February 1993, Robert and John travelled to the New Shran shopping centre in Merseyside. The boys skipped school to travel to a centre where they stole sweets and other items such as a can of blue paint. Little James was with his mother Denise, 25 years old. Denise at around 3.40 went into the butcher's shop, taking less than one minute to order her meat and then returned to where she had left James. When she returned, she soon realised that James was nowhere to be seen. She quickly ran for the security staff and gave them a description of what James was wearing. The security quickly searched the area, however they couldn't find James so immediately called the police. In a turn of events, Robert and John saw young James standing by himself outside the butcher's shop and he had lured him over to them. After a small talk, the boys then took James's hand, walking out towards the exit at 3.42pm as this was captured on CCTV. Walking for around 2.5 miles with James, their first destination was the canal where they were physically abusing him by picking him up then dropping his head onto the floor resulting in a bruised forehead. They then thought about pushing James into the canal but was quick to change their mind. 38 people witnessed the three, however none of them intervened enough to separate James away from Robert and John. Even though James was clearly in distress, crying his eyes out, eventually two people did challenge the boys about James. The boys said they were heading to the police station because they found James alone. They believed the boys and walked off. On another occasion, the boys were stopped by a lady who again questioned them. She offered to walk with the boys to the police station, however, as it was a lengthy walk and she had her own young child with her, so she trusted the boys to walk there themselves. Eventually, it was getting dark, the boys needed to decide what to do with James, as more and more people were questioning them. They had no intention of taking James to the police station and instead walked towards the train tracks where they would end James's life. When they arrived, one of the boys threw the stolen blue paint at James's face. They then continued to inflict injury on James before smashing his head with an iron bar. They then tripped him naked and left his body on the railroad tracks and weighted his head down with rubble for the train to hit. They said this was done to make James's death look like an accident. At the same time that James was kidnapped and attacked, the police had arrived at the shopping centre and from the CCTV footage, they discovered that James was being led away by two other children and the news of James was immediately made public with posters on the walls of Liverpool. 
Two days after the incident, on Sunday the 14th of February, a young boy had been playing on the tramps when he noticed what he thought was a dead animal, but as he got closer he realised it was a child. He was in shock and quickly ran home to tell his parents, who subsequently called the police. After a few days, CCTV was made public in the hope someone would come forward with information. By then, it had been made public that James's body had been splattered with blue paint. On the 17th of February, a woman walked into a police station and said she knew her neighbour's son who had been truanting on the day James was killed. His name was Robert Thompson and his friend was John Fenables. Her reason for reporting them was because on the night of James's disappearance, Robert had returned home with blue paint on his clothes. So on the 18th of February 1993, at 7.30am, the two boys were arrested. When the police first saw the boys, they were very shocked at how young and small they were and questioned their ability to commit such a brutal crime, but nevertheless they were taken to the police station and intensely questioned about James's death. A day later on Friday 19th of February, Robert confessed they had taken young James to the train tracks. Again on the same day, John confessed to his parents what he had done, not knowing the police would hear the conversation between them. However, this was strong evidence to prove he committed the crime. Evidence for their conviction was building up, so the police decided to charge both boys on Saturday the 20th February with kidnapping and murder of James Bolger. On the 22nd of February 1993, the two boys stood trial at South Sefton Magistrates Court. They plead not guilty. Riots were forming outside of the court, resulting in the relocation of another trial. This time, the trial was held at Preston Crown Court on 1st of November. By this point, the children were 11 years old and they were able to be convicted of murder and tried as adults. During the trial, it was found that Robert and John had tried to abduct another young boy from the same shopping centre. However, his mum at a distance saw his son following the boys, so immediately ran after them. The prosecutors highlighted that during one of the interviews, John had mentioned that it was their intention that day to take a child and throw them into the path of a moving car and make it look like an accident. Pathologists found James suffered from 42 injuries with multiple fractures to the skull and the right side was shattered, showing severe brain damage including hemorrhage at the centre. The foreskin of his penis was pulled back, suggesting there was a sexual element to the murder, and it was also found James had passed away before a train severed his body. They also matched the pattern of a bruise on James's cheek with that of one of the boys' shoes. The paint at the crime scene matches those on John and Roberts' clothing. 38 witnesses were called to the stand to reveal what they had seen happen in the shopping centre that day. Each of them felt really guilty about not stopping the boys, but they assumed they were related, so didn't intervene further. On 24th of November 1993, in just six hours, the juries found Robert Thompson and John Fenables guilty. They believed the boys were able to distinguish between right and wrong and they were both sentenced to a minimum of eight years. The two boys were sent to different youth offenders institution. It was around this time that the recommended minimum sentence for the two was raised from eight years to 10 years. Then in July 1994, it was raised once more to 15 years. In 1999, both of the boys' lawyer appealed to the European Court of Human Rights that the trial had not been impartial. They succeeded and the minimum sentence was reduced back to eight years. Some believe John was influenced by watching Violet movies. On the 18th of January 1993, around a month before the murder, John watched Child Play 3. During the film, the doll was killed at the funfair during a train ride with the doll being dismembered and had blue paint on their face, which was similar to how James died. On 22nd of June 2001, they were released and to protect their identity, both were given new identities and moved to different parts of the country for their safety. The pair were freed on January 2001. Robert Thompson has not re-offended since being released and in 2010 it was reported he was in a long-term relationship with a man who knows his true identity. As for John Fenables, he was arrested in 2008 after a drunken fight for the possession of cocaine. He had been in and out of prison for downloading and distributing indecent images of children. The pair was given a second chance in life, but unfortunately for John, he didn't take this opportunity to change for the better. 
Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on this case and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do subscribe and share this with your friends and family and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now!